Hi, dearly beloved babies of our amazing creator, Abba, Yahweh, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, in the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I wasn't expecting to tear up, but okay. So, I'm just being obedient to God's prompting. I'm like a sweaty mess right now. <laughs> Once again, I stayed up all night um, conquering a task that needed to be done in my house that um, I kept procrastinating and stressing about and being overwhelmed. And a lot of nights I'm or that I stay up trying to get things done or a lot of times I'm sleeping, maybe catching cat naps here and there, and I'm having panic attacks while I'm sleeping. But anyways, I'm feeling joyful right now, <laughs> you know, in God's word, it says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It also talks about like the fruits of the spirit and it also talks about, you know, long suffering. So here I was finally accomplishing, um, getting my girl's room painted and it was a joint um thing that we did together they wanted to switch rooms around they've been asking me for quite some time to have uh the bigger master bedroom my two daughters that share a room so we did it we switched rooms around and they picked their colors of what they wanted painted and mind you i multitask i i try to juggle a lot and yet it just seems like no matter how much i do it barely puts a dent in what needs to be done. Anyways, I, past the whole introduction, God prompted me to turn on the camera, as is, don't think twice about it, just speak. So here I was like looking at daylight <laughs> after staying up for like over 24 hours and I still have a lot I need to get done. It's just the way it is. But I'm starting to see the blessings that come out of the sufferings and the struggles and the tragedies and just all kinds of things. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm like, literally, I'm not even kidding, covered in paint. I'm a mess, <laughs> sweat and everything. But anyway, um, the Lord said, he showed me what's going on here. Um, I see this whole world epidemic that's going on right now as a blessing. I see, I'm starting to understand, like, no matter when you're, like, confused or aggravated or you're feeling, like, overwhelmed or even, like unfortunate things that are happening in our lives, right? God spoke to me yesterday morning and was like, and it just came out when I was speaking with somebody else, telling a uh, sister in Christ my circumstances. And it's like when I tell some of my testimonies or what's going on or, um, some of my trauma, people look at me shocked, you know, and I am so, like, used to the fact that I was burdened with things that were terrifying in my life and things that were annoyances and a thorn in my side that I understand all along, Jesus has walked with me. He has been right by my side. I think back into my childhood, how I was, I really was picked on. And I couldn't really find peace 
no matter where I went. Um, really, the only peace to me was my mother, and she still is, besides Jesus. Um, but God has increased. He, if we could be trusted in the little, then he will multiply to the much. But during the little and during the storms, you still have to continually keep seeking him, looking at his face, turning your face away from your problems and your struggles and look at him. And when you think you're, if you've been born again and saved and you're praying every day, God, your will be done, then understand whatever's taking place in your life, God is allowing it. And we are not meant to understand everything at all. That's why God is like beyond comprehension because our minds are not anything like his. Our ways are nothing like his. In fact, Jesus is the only way. If we look to each other, we are going to walk each other into some pretty serious messes. And um, so I had to turn on the camera because the Lord was showing me things I went through that I'm finally at peace with. But it took so long to get there and it took so long to keep getting out of my own way and sticking close to him on the narrow way on the narrow path and trusting in the journey and trusting in the times of solitude and learning how to not be afraid of what people are going to think if you're transparent and you stop pretending that you got it all together and you start talking about things you've overcome or things you might currently be going through, um, as long as the Lord is leading you, then who cares? Who cares what the world thinks? In fact, you're supposed to abandon the world. If you're friends with the world, then your enemy is with God. So I came to a conclusion of things that I could not even fathom at the time why I was going through. But God was using all of that so I could just release it to Him and be used by Him, trusting that Jesus is alive and on the inside. So even when offenses happen and people who don't believe are just trying to dim your light God keeps saying let your light so shine no matter who's coming up against you no matter who's you know the devil comes to steal kill and destroy so even in your most hardest trying times you can still find comfort and joy in knowing that God is with you so Somebody is going through a storm right now. We all go through storms. I'm going to go through another one. Like, it, it's inevitable. I finally understand a little bit more. I've gained some wisdom along this way through the trials and tribulations and shortcomings and backslidings and attacks and fiery ordeals. I learned. And I look at the younger generation and I remember being their age and I remember the struggles at each age seems like it's like the worst time of your life but yet I can remember some of the best times of my life at that age at every age you know there's good and bad so if the Lord if this is you and you're in the middle of a raging catastrophe right now and it just feels like a tsunami is just taking over your entire being please don't look at the storm trust that Jesus is with you just like he was with the disciples when he was walking on water and you have to have that little bit of faith that's all you need just a little bit because at times that's all we have 
And we might think we have no faith, but you still have breath in you. So that's like a mustard seed of faith right there. Just the courage to take one breath after another. Once, and eventually it will be one step after another. And I never thought I would be here today. Like my whole life I was awkward. I couldn't, didn't know how to socialize. I'm just what God has given me. He's, he's breathed his spirit in me. So I know how to speak now because I trust in him and he gives me the words and he just encourages me and he's the best counselor. So whoever's in a storm right now and you just feel like it's been never ending and it's not going to end. Perhaps you got some really nasty spirits that are coming up against you or that you're trying to battle and purge out. Just keep surrendering everything to God. Let him take captive your mind and your thoughts. A lot of us battle mental illnesses because of things that are beyond our control. And there's a lot of things that happen that we didn't see coming. One day everything's fine, and then the next day just we're hit with like the most shocking, unbearable issue or news or whatever. I encourage you right now. Only because I am at, at the calm after my storm. And I every time I accomplish something that I didn't think I was going to, I realize how sovereign God is. And how he's had this plan all along. And he knows the end of all matters for each of us. So whoever's going through something... That is just agonizing. Please look to him and know that he's going to use your situation one day. And he's going to turn around what was meant to destroy you, what was meant for evil. He's going to turn it for his good. But the thing is, you have to trust in him. And the only way to God is through his son, Jesus. And you have to pay more attention to what Jesus endured for us so we could take comfort in these times in knowing that he or there's nothing that can come up against us that is like unknown to him there's nothing we're going through that he doesn't already know in fact he knows our next thought he knows what our next words are going to be and one day he will use you right out of your situation. He's going to gather all those broken pieces that you just don't make any sense of right now. He is so perfect. It's beyond anything we can understand. There's so many times where I'm like, what is wrong with me? I can't keep a schedule like everybody else or, you know, whatever my issues are, right? But God just, bam, right in my face, shows me the confirmations. My child, you are right where you're supposed to be. Never mind what people are telling you. What am I telling you? And that's what God's saying to you right now. You know, if he is for you, no one can be against you. And I am living proof of so many things that I saw no other way out of. There was times that I thought suicide just would be the escape to end pain or um, bondage I was in. Now, it's a lie from the devil. Please, just trust God. Escape the devil and run to your father, your creator, who understands every second of your life. More than all the people that you cherish in your life combined, people that you share your like deepest secrets with, there are still things you haven't shared with anybody, or maybe you don't even remember. God has kept track of all your sorrows. He keeps track of your coming and going, 
And I just want you to know <clears throat> it's not going to last forever. This message is for somebody. And it's not for me to know. Because I don't want to be seen for who I am apart from God. When people see me, I want it to lead them in their walk closer to God. I want them to cling to Christ. I want them to say, you know what, if she can still forgive the unforgivable, if she can still encourage those who don't necessarily deserve it, you know, then God can do that for me too. There's going to be a lot of times, listen, he is not so distant from you. Where you are, it's not so far that his arm can't reach you. He hears your cries. He knows what you're going through. And he is constantly speaking to you. And he constantly wants us to open up in his word, in the Holy Bible. There's a lot of times I don't and I avoid it because I'm like, I have to do this and that and this and that. And I don't have time to sit down and read the Bible or my mind can't focus on the words right now. You literally have to run to your secret place. Take a moment. God provides these moments for us to rest. It says in his word. Take refuge in him. Rest under His, his the shadow of his wing. He's your he's got you under his wing. He's he's got you covered. Only God can see the whole world all at once and hear everybody's prayers all at once. Me, I man, listen. I went through some trauma in my life. I'm going to maybe try to be transparent so you can get a better understanding that you can go through some of the unthinkable worst things and still be used by God. And, and speak on it to encourage somebody else who is broken. He uses the broken for the broken. But you you have to be willing to empty of yourself and let him fill you. Because apart from him, and if you're not operating in the Holy Spirit, you, you could lead someone in a totally wrong direction. You have to just trust in him in all your ways. And he will make your path straight. And he will, he will use you at the right due time. But... There's times in my life I've battled men I, I, it, mental illness is like in my family. It's in my genes. You know, I, I, I'd say it's generational curses. So you kind of have to pray those away. There's times where you're going to have to go into fast, fasting and like deny your flesh and just use that time of um, maybe drinking water because Jesus is the, the water, the living water. He, you will those who go to him will thirst no more he is the bread of life so we have to trust in that while we're denying flesh the spirit is being strengthened and in that time is like when you can obtain that peace that surpasses all understanding that you never saw coming He's going to bless you with things that you didn't think were your desires. It's going to be different than those dreams that f fell away from you. The things that shattered in your life. The things that you fought so hard to have that you just... Prayers you prayed and begged God for and he denied those things. You're going to understand one day there was a reason for it. Only God knows the plans he has for you. So, I go, I suffer from depression, I suffer from panic disorder, and I definitely suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is not easy because I feel like those that I love the most and closest to me, sometimes they have to suffer too because I have to take moments away that maybe they would want to be in my presence and in, in having a conversation with me or spending quality time with me. And I have to go heal. I have to ask the Lord to repair me because I don't want to project all that negativity. So 
if I get anxious or irritable, I actually like beg for my space during that time because I'm trusting in the Lord and I'm just releasing to him and I'm listening and trying to be still. And there's times where I get overwhelmed and then he'll, and then I hear him instructing me when I'm like, I can't do this. And he will say, you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Or I will be like, God, I am so tired. And he will say, rest. I provide a day of rest, a Sabbath day for you. So you can rest and you don't have to take all this on. And there'll be times where I'm frightened and I am don't know how I'm going to get out of there. I don't see a way out. And God says, what's important? possible with man he makes all things possible and he says be courageous it literally no matter what you are going for, through right now god is with you he hasn't left you and he's going to get you through it and you're going to understand a little bit more at each stage of your life maybe that person who fell away from you in your life that you depended on and loved more than anybody else we have to understand that not everybody is meant to go through our whole book of our life. You know, it's it's at the end of the, we have to run this race to the finish. Some people are just chapters in your life. Some people are just a sentence or a couple words. And in, in even those who frustrate you or who you think is your worst enemy, God's using all of that because he's already written your love story. And if you are a believer and you believe in God through his son, Jesus Christ, leading you, and that that is the only way to him in heaven, then you can trust that your name is in his book of life. And one day when you reach heaven, because this isn't our home, one day when you reach heaven, Jesus is going to be right there face to face with you to greet you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. As he puts a crown on your head because he realizes this is not easy. But he tells us to be of, of good cheer because he's already overcome the world. So I went through, I, I, I have so many testimonies. But, like, the one that kind of stands out a lot that I'm starting to get comfortable to talk about and understand that it's okay. You don't have to keep these traumas a hidden secret that you're ashamed of. Because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Even those perpetrators who did things to you, they could be delivered and forgiven too. But we have to come to a place where we forgive them. Because we don't want to carry that burden with us. We don't want to become what hurt us. So we forgive them and we just shed that extra weight. So we can mount up with wings like eagles and soar. You don't even have to pump those wings. You're just soaring. You're coasting. You're, you're just resting in him. And he's carrying you through these things. Up and over all the things that are trying to pull you down and destroy you. But if you don't start releasing those things one by one you're going to get stuck. You're going to get complacent and be stagnant. And like eventually when you are trying to rise up above it, you're going to be like walking dead. You're just going with the motions and you're putting on a fake smile and you're putting on a costume to pretend everything's okay. And how many times throughout our life have we said, Oh, you know, this person's a hypocrite. They wear a mask. Let's see what's behind the mask. Or how about you take the mask off and show who you really are. Maybe you've had pain in your eyes, but you paint on this fake smile. Listen, none of us are all put together. We're all broken creatures of habit. And we all are in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. We all need to be saved. He's our hero. God said to me the other day, stop putting God expectations on people. And don't let people put God expectations on you. So, and we're not to become what hurt us. If we keep carrying that, like reliving over and over and over again, even the good times that you're clinging to of your past that you can't go back and get back, you got to let it all go. 
But you can't get to the next chapter if you keep rel reliving the chapters before that you've already overcome. Just think, you made it this far. God is 100% perfection to help you survive and overcome. Look at, look at your survival rate right now. You might not feel like it. But one day, you will understand that all these things made you who you are. And if you trust in Him, you'll understand you're made in His image. That's why we have to be born again. We have to be baptized. Holy Spirit and water, you know, just be, just go be baptized by water so you can just dunk under and just let all the sin be washed away and be made new. And as soon as you recognize, once you're a believer, you'll re you will recognize um, how you messed up, how you tripped and fell, because that's what we're all going to do. Trip, fall seven times, get up eight. Just keep getting back up. You know, that's like expect, putting that expectation on yourself to think you're not going to fall is like expecting a baby that's like 9, 10 months old that's learning how to stand and take its first steps to just run instead of walking one step at a time and falling. Would we condemn a baby if they fell as they're learning how to walk? So, I went through trauma. It's going to be a whole nother video, but step by step, I'm overcoming it. I was faced with, face to face with, um, one of many perpetrators, but this one was the main one that drugged me, cut me with a knife, forced me to do so many things against my will. And I screamed and fought my way through and raped me made me just do unthinkable things and I had to face things I thought I would never have to and I overcame things that you just don't see a way out of but I also understand that the Lord was with me and he allowed it and I just trust him and love him and I could never deny his sovereignty and his love and if we understood everything and everything was always you know just wonderful in our life then we wouldn't need him we wouldn't know him and we wouldn't know a taste of hell and where we don't want to go because it doesn't matter how bad it is right now everybody's problems combined you still haven't even had to experience what Jesus did and go through what Jesus did if you're a believer you will suffer yes you will um, even non-believers suffer but they get so comfortable in that place of darkness that they stay there and they don't see a way out so we have to lift everybody in prayer anyways um I was raped by multiple guys, and at times they were all sh saying things to me all at once. And I realize now that that's a big part of my PTSD. If, for instance, if two people are talking to me at once, it freaks me out. I get an anxiety attack, and I get frustrated and yeah, I'm scared. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I try to find my place of escape and my secret place with the Lord. And he sits with me while I get through it. And he helps me just understand more and more. And mind you, this happened years ago. I have children the age that I was when this happened to me. And it's still affects me almost just as badly as if it were when it was happening to me and that's a part of living with post-traumatic stress disorder you keep reliving where a small simple thing could be a trigger and put you right back in that situation all over again it's not easy but I learn how to Ooh, that sounded terrible <laughs> 
um, somewhere in the neighborhood. Um, garbage. Anyways, um, I also went through periods in my life where I was bedridden, stricken with just horrible, agonizing grief. <clears throat> Whether it was mental or physical, just so many times I felt crippled. But, you know, Jesus healed many. And he helped me many times just rise up back to my feet again and just keep going. But I also know during those times when it was out of my control and I could not get out of my bed, the Lord allowed it. He had me there for a reason, and I learned a lot during those times. And I learned that I was desperate for Him. Uh, I learned that no matter how many brushes of death you might face, you really got to think about where you're going to go when you exit this world and you take your last breath. You know, you could be on fire for the Lord or you can be burning and perishing with Satan so you could also trust in the blood of Jesus or you could have blood on your own hands and Jesus was so generous that all of his blood poured out from him. And, it, and it's not easy to understand if you're not a believer. Or even when I was like. First came to know Jesus. You see the picture of him on the cross. And most of the time it's depicted that he's all cleaned up. With just a small like rag around his waist. In the crown of thorns on his head. And even if it was just the crown of thorns that he suffered. And being nailed to the cross. That's painful and excruciating enough. But I didn't know really the degree of what he went through. He was crushed for our transgressions. And the more you spend time with God... And talk to him. And trust in his word. And be hungry for his word. The more you're going to get a better understanding. Why it is just so vital and important. To always put him first. If you start to put other things above God. Those things are going to dictate your life. You're going to be a prisoner and a slave to that. And is that really what or who you want to be in charge of your life? You don't. You really have to deny yourself and take up your cross daily. I just understand now a little bit better than I did yesterday. And I will understand a little bit more tomorrow. And it's really in those valley lows that you have so much that you're going to learn. Those seeds are being planted in that dirty low place that you're in. And one day, you will realize you will bloom right where you're planted. But your roots have to go down in Christ. You have to trust in Him. <clears throat> Anyways, don't be ashamed of what you're going through. And don't resist trusting in His strength. Because, and you have to resist the devil so he can flee from you. And the only way to do that is to draw closer to God. Come closer to him. I just, there was times in my life where I was terrified. I overcame a lot. A lifetime of lust. People who lusted after me and people I lusted after to realize that 
that's not what you want. If God's not in the center of it, you got to let it go. If God's not in it, you have to release it and trust him more than whatever it is you're holding on to greater than him. You cannot keep your hand on the problem and put one hand up to him and one hand on the pro on the problem. You choose today who you're going to serve. You can't serve both God and the flesh. You can't serve money. Money, the love of money is the root of all evil. If you are loving money, you're going to hate God. You're going to try to run away from him, but you can't escape him even when you're turning your face from him. But the deeper you get into your sin and you don't repent, the more sins that are going to just build up on top of that. And before you know it, you're just one big tangled mess. And you need to backtrack and understand where you open the door, where Satan knocked and you open the door and let him in. And you need to ask God to close that door and seal it off with the blood of Jesus because Jesus is knocking on your heart and you need to open up and let him in and trust him. God is going to use your story one day to inspire somebody just like he used mine to inspire you. So if you made it to the end of this video wow that's awesome because i wouldn't sit through this long of a video but i'm asking the lord to please put his blessing on it and cover each and every word i have spoken let it be accurate according to his will heavenly father just bless whoever's watching this today in the name of your son jesus christ i'm so grateful for you god i surrender all to you father and I lift up whoever's watching in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.